Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for uh, attending. My name is Shaha Tapu uh, from the University of Tartu. I got my master just two weeks ago. Uh, my thesis uh, was about uh, crypto privacy preserving cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. and ZK Snacks. And today I'm going to uh, give an overview on Zcash and an efficient ZK snarks with non malleable proofs that we proposed in the second part of my thesis. Uh, I was working with a uh, group of uh, Professor Helga Lipma. <coughs> this seminar has uh, two main parts. In the first part, I'm going to talk about how Zcash, uh, how Zcash uses uh, ZK snarks, and in the second part, I will give uh, I will talk about uh, uh, a construction that we proposed uh, on for ZK snacks, which is which gives the non-malleable proof, and uh, it is accepted to be published in SRX workshop cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology, and we will present it at the end of September in Luxembourg. As you know. Bitcoin is a decentralized digital currency. Its network consists of a huge number of nodes around the world. world. They connect to each other. They do transactions directly without any trusted third party. And these transactions are uh, recorded in a block. And each block connected to next block and create the uh, blockchain. And in order to prevent double spending, this ledger, uh, this, uh, ledger is broadcasted to all the users. One uh, very important privacy uh, issue with the Bitcoin is that Bitcoin linkable. Bitcoin is linkable. It means that, however, the addresses are pseudonymous, but still, uh, since uh, users are using just one or very few number of addresses, so it is linkable, as you can see here. One very known uh, proposal to solve this issue is uh, anonymous payments, privacy preserving uh, digital coins. And uh, Zcash is one of the famous ones. And Zcash is a decentralized anonymous payment, which is established on top of uh, Bitcoin and uh, was proposed was proposed by uh, Ben Sasson et al. in 2014 and released in 2016. And if you want to compare the ledger of Bitcoin with uh, the ledger of Zcash, in Zcash you will see something like this. Everything is hidden. Uh, for example, uh, source, source, destination, and the amount of transactions, all of them are uh, hidden. Um, First, I want to explain a bit about ZK Snacks since uh, I will uh, talk about the um, Zcash and how it uses ZK Snacks. ZK Snacks stand for Zero Knowledge Succeeding Non Interactive Argument of Knowledge. And this kind of mix, NISC in CRS model ha consists of three algorithms. The first algorithm is CRS generator, which is run by trusted third party and uh, generates the common reference string. And this common reference <coughs> string, CRS, is, uh, is shared by prover and verifier. Prover uses this CRS and the statement and the uh, public statement and the secret witnesses that she knows and creates the proof and sends it to Verifier then verifier checks the vali validity of proof using the CRS. Um, there are some security requirements for this protocol, and uh, the first one is completeness, which means that honest prover always can convince the honest verifier. Another property is uh, zero knowledge. Zero knowledge means that the dishonest verifier should not be learn anything about the proof, about the witness from the proof. And another one is knowledge soundness. Knowledge soundness means that this honest prover can, uh, should not be uh, convinced the 
Hannes verifier unless she knows the witness. This knows means us that there is an extractor which can uh, extract the witness from the prover. And the uh, last property is that uh, succinctness. The proof should be short. And you can see that in Bitcoin or in Zcash, uh, they, are kind of, um, they send these kind of proofs into the ledger and it should be short. Uh, here are some statements. Like, uh, for example, a prover, prover wants to give a proof that she knows a secret key for a public key such that public key is equal to g to the power of secret key. And uh, in second one, for example, the prover wants to prove that she knows a public value. Uh, she knows uh, the value, values of v1 and v2 uh, for this uh, public value v such that this equation, the second equation, holds. And uh, this is the way that uh, in Zcash uh, users to check the uh, creating value, the uh, uh, receiving coins and everything, and so on. Then now we want to see that how, how ZK-SNARK is used in application. ZK-SNARKs is used in, uh, to prove all uh, computations that can be written as an arithmetic circuit. For example, you can see here an arithmetic circuit, which uh, for some, which prover for some, uh, for some public uh, parameters, values, uh, wants to prove that she knows some witnesses. And this circuit will, give, uh, to, will be given to a uh, CRS generator, and CRS generator using the circuit and security parameter will generate the CRS, which will be shared by prover to proof generation and verifier to uh, proof verification. And we know that uh, there are some security parameters or uh, security requirements for ZK snarks. And here we can tell that Knowledge soundness guarantees the uh, computation's correctness, which means all the computations uh, have been done correctly, honestly. And zero knowledge guarantees the privacy of the prover. And uh, there are several applications that they are using this ZK snacks to give a proof for their computations. And uh, Zcash is uh, one of those uh, privacy preserving coins, verifiable computations that uh, yesterday we had in our uh, talk with more detail about it. Uh, and uh, smart contracts, uh, for example, like Hulk. Okay, before going uh, through the details uh, of uh, Zcash, I'm going to, uh, this is worse to uh, kind of mention that Zcash is an instantiation of a decentralized uh, anonymous payments scheme for 128-bit security. And it consists of six algorithms uh, set up for creating public parameters, create addresses to, generating, uh, to generate uh, uh, addresses, mint for uh, minting a new coin, pour for spending kind of, uh, verify transaction to uh, verify the proof and signatures and everything and receive uh, to, uh, to be convinced that, okay, I got the desired uh, coins. And uh, to, in today's talk, I'm going to talk about more about these two because uh, they're kind of, uh, they kind of have the same procedures, but uh, with some very small but very essential differences. And uh, I will talk about them. And about POR, I, I will talk with more detail because uh, POR uses the ZK snacks. And ZK snack is used in POR algorithm. OK, uh, minting procedure. Uh, in minting procedure, a user A picks a secret key and uh, runs a pseudo random function on it and gets a public key. Then, on the other hand, he picks a randomness row, 
and using uh, and given this randomness and her secret key to a pseudo another pseudo random function gets the serial number of her coin. And then in previous slide, uh, she continues by uh, she uh, she picks again another randomness. Here you can see that we have two level of commitments. In the first level, she picks another randomness and uh, given uh, randomness R, randomness rho, and uh, her public key to the commitment gets the K. And in second layer, uh, again picks another randomness S and gives to, uh, to uh, gives randomness S and K and the value, which is the desired value for new coin, uh, to a commitment and gets the coin commitment. Uh, actually, the output of the, this algorithm uh, will be a mint transaction, which contains V, K, S, C, M, I mean, coin commitment. And all the users can check uh, the integrity of rules, the consistency of everything. And here, this transaction stays for, I hereby spend V Bitcoin to create com a coin commitment. And here is a KS to prove consistency, as I mentioned. <coughs> here you can see that all the users will check the consistent consistency of uh, these values. But uh, maybe you may notice that here somebody can pick K and uh, can pick K randomly and create a commitment and submit it. It's okay. Up to now, everything is okay. You can submit it. But the problem uh, appears, will appear when uh, she or he wants to spend the coin. Because when you want to spend the coin, you will give the proof for, that, for these uh, uh, computations that you have been done. And you, will, uh, you need the serial number, which kind of uh, serial number that uh, created by the same randomnesses and everything. You need, for consistency, you need all these uh, information. So, uh, and here you can see that it, uh, in this site, it created commi a coin commitment. These commitments will, uh, will be placed in a, a leaf of a Merkel tree, and uh, later in verification, we will give the authentication path from this root at this moment that the commitment uh, added to the tree. And uh, we will give the, in the proof, we will, in the verification, we will check the authentication path from the root to the spatial or particular uh, commitment. Uh, moving on, spending here. Uh, spending uh, algorithm of Zcash, I would say that, as you can see here, everything is the same, kind of. Everything is the same, but with very essential and small differences. Uh, one difference is that, kind of you, uh, I am, as a spender, need, uh, I need to create coin somehow for you. You are as a receiver. I need to create a coin for you, kind of. I am minting again, but for you. Here, uh, how we can do these uh, things that I mentioned, uh, here is that user B, user B, the receiver, picks a secret key, create, runs the pseudo random function, creates the public key, and gives it, uh, I mean, it is public, the public mm. key, and it is public. And then user A, sender, picks her uh, public key and, uh, and she, the sender, picks these randomnesses, rho new, r new, s new, and v new. Picks the, this is the desired value of coin that we are going to spend. But uh, she picks these <coughs> randomnesses and uh, she kind of creates the commitment of coin for uh, the receiver's uh, public key. And then, uh, 
we know that in order to spend this coin, because the receiver in the future wants to spend this coin, so in order uh, to uh, create a situation that she can spend her coin, uh, she needs some information, like these randomnesses that re, uh, send, uh, Spender uh, picked before. So uh, Spender needs to encrypt all this information with an encryption and uh, sends it to the receiver. Receiver will, will decrypt it. Receiver needs to decrypt it. And uh, then here, using her own uh, receiver decrypted and uh, using her own secret key and this row runs another pseudorandom function and gets the serial new serial <coughs> number which she just knows about it. Actually, here what was the problem if Spender knew this serial number? Spender could do uh, two attack. Spender could uh, double spend it, Spender could uh, kind of track it because uh, if he knew, the Spender knew the uh, this serial number could track that, okay, now the receiver is spending this money and everything. Because of this, Zcash decided to uh, use this kind of structure for that. And this algorithm has uh, uh, outputs a port transaction, which contains the root of Merkle tree and the old uh, coins serial number um, and the new coins commitment and uh, a proof that I have done everything correctly. Um, correctly. And actually in Zcash, they, uh, they instantiated all the pseudorandom function and commitments with uh, show 256. And okay, and this transaction states for I am using of a coin with a value via old and a unique seri old serial number in order to prevent uh, double spending. They sent the old coin serial number to a list, the spent coins list. And I know some uh, randomnesses mm -hmm. for my coin and that uh, are consist consistent with the uh, old commitment. <clears throat> and uh, now uh, I want to give an uh, intuition behind the uh, poor algorithm. One old coins comes in, one new coins goes out, and there are two value and public addresses a destination will be uh, assigned to the new coins. And here you can see the serial number of old coin and the commitment of new coin. And a proof which says that the old coin was valid and value of uh, old coin is equal to the value of new coin. But this is not enough. We need to, uh, we need, in order to uh, create a situation, in, the, in order to use in practical cases, we, uh, Zcash needed to uh, kind of improve it. And uh, the improvements of Zcash here was that they, instead of using one to one poor algorithm, they use two to two poor algorithm. This means two old points come in and two old points goes out. The second one was, um, as you know, uh, in Bitcoin or all the digital currencies, there are some uh, transaction fees. And uh, they added a value pub, a public value, which will go into the public address in Bitcoin and it will, be, will be paid by Bitcoin, the public Bitcoin. And the next one, in order to prevent uh, malleability attack, on the proof, they added a signature to this scheme, the one-time signature to this scheme. Now we can, uh, we can see uh, all the uh, details about the real poor algorithms are in Zcash. Two old coins comes in, two new coins goes out, uh, value one and the destination one, which is the public addresses, uh, will go into the coin one and 
V2 and destination 2 will go into the coin 2 and V a pub which is a public value uh, public Bitcoin will go into the uh, public Bitcoin uh, for transaction fee and here you can see the old coin serial number which will go into the uh, list of spent coins and the new coins commitment which will go into the unspent coins list and the proof which gives that the old coins were valid and uh, the values of old coins now is equal to the values of uh, new coins plus via pop, the public value. Okay. Um, and uh, here you can see the highlighted information which will go into the ledger. Let's see uh, how, uh, how is the proof, the previous proof, uh, with more detail. For example, in this proof, whoever wants to give a proof for uh, that she knows some secrets, which is here. For example, I know the authentication path and everything and uh, old coins and uh, everything. She wants to give a proof for these secrets. Um, uh, she, she wants to give a proof that she knows uh, these secrets secrets for those uh, public informations and uh, such that all these computations uh, have been done correctly. And uh, to sum up, we will say that all these computations uh, will be done in, a, in an arithmetic circuit uh, and prover uses this arithmetic circuit by using the ZK snack and gives the proof for uh, that she knows the witnesses for those statements, public statements. This is a sample of a, sam a sample uh, port transaction. Uh, here you can see the root of mercantry, old serial numbers, new uh, coin commitments, uh, via pub, and info. Info is kind of the addresses and some information about the via pub. And uh, the CPK and these four are using for are used for uh, kind of uh, the signature and prevent the malleability attack, uh, MAC and everything. And uh, here are the two cipher texts that Spender uh, puts the information, secret information that he picked and sends with encryption to the uh, receiver. And here is the zk snox proof. As you can see, it's very succinct and short, kind of one kilobyte. Okay, we covered the uh, first part of the talk. And uh, now, I will move on a variation of GROT uh, ZK SNAP, uh, which uh, with non malleable proofs. <clears throat> As you know, in uh, ZK SNARKs, uh, we have some security requirements. But in order to make the proofs non malleable, we need an, an, a, a stronger notion of knowledge soundness. This is wrong. If we call this uh, non-malleability uh, simulation knowledge soundness. It is called simulation extractability. These are the same kind of. Simulation extractability means simulation knowledge soundness. What is the simulation knowledge soundness? Simulation knowledge soundness says that if prover have seen arbitrary number of simulated proofs, still she, she should not be able to uh, give a proof to convince the uh, verifier uh, unless she knows the witness. This uh, line that you can see here, I mean the prover have seen arbitrary number of uh, simulated proofs is kind of simulation. And uh, here, um, and actually, up to now, uh, there are several uh, ZK snarks which are proposed by um, Grad, uh, Professor Lipma, and others. And uh, but up to now, Grad ZK snark, which proposed by Grad 
in uh, 2016 is very, very efficient, but unfortunately, its proofs are malleable. And Grot with, Grot with Muller, they propose another variation, another ZK snark, uh, which is for, which is, which works for SAP, a square arithmetic uh, circuit. And uh, the Grot Muller's proofs are non malleable. But, um, they are, the proofs are non malleable, but its efficiency, efficiency is uh, very less to compare by uh, Graz's ZK snarks. You can see here, um, Graz is very efficient than uh, Graz Muller ZK snarks. But okay, but Graz has still a problem. Then it brought out to our mind that can we construct a more efficient ZK snark with non malleable proofs? I mean something between them. Is it if is it pos is it possible or not? Then, uh, fortunately, we answered this question positively, and we got a new scheme. You can see here our scheme is between them, kind of slightly in, in efficiency, slightly near to growth, but still growth is uh, efficient. Mm, but uh, now it's the time that we see that. Okay, what is the problem with grass? Uh, what, what are the attacks on grass? Okay, it's like that we, are, we try to make it non malleable. Uh, one of the attacks on it is man in the middle attack. Uh, let's for, uh, first start by talking uh, by very uh, overview, a high <coughs> over, overview on uh, grass. Okay, it's not. <coughs> grass works for a cap. And uh, it is uh, bilinear pairings. Uh, it is for uh, it is uh, based on bilinear pairings, and it consists of two elements in uh, first group and um, one element in second group. Uh, you can see here this is a proof of uh, graph, and uh, let me mention that uh, this bracket A means G one to the power of five. A, and you can see that if uh, if here is the verification of that, and if you pair uh, two uh, first two two uh, elements of um, proof elements of growth to each other, uh, it should be equal than uh, equal with uh, another the third uh, proof elements of growth uh, pairing with other information in CRS. Here is uh, the man in the middle attack for that. For example, adversary picks a randomness uh, from the ZP <coughs> and uh, she or he uh, multiplies this R with the first um, proof element. And, uh, and you can see here, and the second proof elements, uh, she, she multiplies the second proof elements with 1 over r, and when in, in this verification they cancel out each other, and then this verification still holds. And this is a problem. This is a problem that we try to kind of uh, solve it, and we got the new construction. Uh, actually, uh, in our scheme, uh, we use the folklore or technique, which which is proposed by uh, Bellare and Goldwasser in 1989. Uh, they proposed this. Uh, they uh, they constructed a technique for unforgeable signatures using zk snarks random. Uh, so there are no functions and uh, perfectly binding commitments. We are kind of using the same because our goals are the same. Since, uh, for example, they wanted to make their signatures uh, non malleable, kind of unforgeable, uh, and they wanted to say that, okay, if signer have seen arbitrary number of signature, still she cannot provide the uh, valid signature. Um, but the, the dishonest prover, I mean. Uh, and here we want to show that if this honest prover have seen arbitrary number of simulated proofs, 
still she cannot provide the um, valid uh, proof. Uh, here you can see that using the language of the original version, we uh, constructed, we defined a new language L prime. Uh, here, prover wants to give a proof for these public statements. She knows those secrets, uh, which such that uh, this relation holds. And the key idea behind the pseudo random function here is that. Uh, if somebody knows the secret key, so she can compute this mu, uh, she computes this menu, mu, mu uh, very easily. If uh, she doesn't, so the, this sort of random function acts as a uh, truly random function. Now this is our uh, proposed scheme. We can see here. For new language L prime, actually uh, the original um, the original uh, protocol, um, the grass protocol uh, for language L, uh, it has uh, four algorithms: key generation, prover, verifier, <coughs> and simulator. This simulator uh, will, is used for uh, showing the security requirements of zero knowledge. And uh, we are kind of using that L prime and define a new L prime. And for new L prime language L prime, we kind of uh, define uh, an, uh, the new language, uh, the new algorithms, <coughs> KJ prime, P prime, V prime, and so uh, sim prime. And here you can see that uh, a CRS generator. Uh, CRS generator kind of here you can see that uses the original uh, key gen and uh, but but for new language L prime and in prover you can see that again in at some moments prover uses um, the original prover with uh, uh, but for new language L prime and actually we are kind of uh, adding the signature to the protocol, to the prover. And uh, here for verifier, we have two verification, one for checking the signature and second one for checking the proof. And this is the simulator, which given the tractors to the simulator, it will, um, <coughs> it will, uh, Creates it will generate a, a proof without knowing the witnesses. But actually, kind of we extend extended the size of uh, the, the CRS since we have a bit bigger uh, arithmetic circuit, and all these computations have been done there. And then we instantiated the commitment and so random and function. Uh, and so the Anna functions commitments, we instantiated them with uh, SHA-256 and for signature we use uh, Bonneboyan um, signature scheme. How it works, Bonneboyan signature scheme. Uh, in setup, uh, Sina picks a secret key, puts it in a group, I mean, uh, you can see here, um, she uh, puts it as a key in uh, G and G1 to the uh, to the uh, G1 to the power of secret key, and then this is this is called public key. And for signing signature, it uses uh, this kind of structure. In second in second group, it gives uh, one over m plus the secret key that she knows. For verification, they check this kind of verification. And here we can see that. Um, there is, it's continuous here. And you can see that in this kind of uh, signatures, there is just a one pairing. So we used it and we just added one pairing to the uh, original version. Original version has three pairings and we added one pairing and it, uh, it became four pairings in verification. <coughs> Here we can here you can see the um, 
with more, you can see the more detail about CRS size, proof size, and verification, and all, all these things. Maybe uh, you will notice that uh, here the proofs, uh, our proof size is a bit larger than Grotmuller's proof size, but still our verification is faster. <coughs> and this is uh, kind of, we can say that by uh, a good instantiation, maybe uh, we could uh, get that. And in Grotmuller, I mentioned that uh, Grotmuller is very in inefficient since it, it is for uh, SAP. Uh, it is a kind of sub. Yes. Um, <clears throat> here you can see. Excuse me. And uh, here you can see the plot uh, that we have here uh, for a uh, number of multiplication gates here, and uh, for the size uh, we are very close. This is this dash line is uh, our scheme, and then this line is uh, Grot scheme, and this dash dot uh, line is uh, Grot Muller. And you can see that in uh, CRS, in CRS size, we are very close to uh, Grot. And in this one, in CRS generation time, and this is still for uh, number of multiple gate and for time. And you can see that even here we are very fast and we are uh, kind of uh, close to growth and uh, even when the size, when the uh, number of gates will be extended, for example, uh, Zcash has uh, in original version, the original paper that I read, it has four million gates, so in these kind of cases, and the circuit, the gates that we added to the circuit was uh, 50,000. So it is very less to compare with 4 million. And because of this, we are good here. And in uh, proof generation time, uh, again, for multiplication gates and for time, uh, we are again better than Grotmuller and very close to uh, Grot. And here, even for the verification time, for verification time, it's uh, not, uh, please note that here is uh, its verification grows by the size of statement. Okay, and uh, in in this case, you can see that still we are good. Uh, even in worst case, we are uh, close to uh, Rotmiller. So it was it was my talk, and thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.